morning, everyone. Today I will present the article, Correlation of Degree of Clavicle Shortening After Non-Surgical Treatment of Mid-Shaft Fracture with Upper Limb Function. My name is Arturo Chino. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, first of all, I uh, would like to thank you for the invitation to come here today and, and do this presentation. Uh, this is Ibirapuera Park in Sao Paulo, Mass Museum of Art in Sao Paulo, Avenida Paulista, uh, Set Church, and Estallada Bridge. Uh, I would like to invite you to all to come and visit us, our city and visit our hospital. This is shoulder and elbow group in from Hospital São Paulo. Our chief group is Nicola Arquete Neto. This is our hospital, our, our main hospital, and this is the discipline of upper limb surgery. So the, our article today is about this publication in BMC, Musculoskeletal Disorder, in June 2015. Um, so we're going to talk a, a little about clavicle fractures. It's a very common fracture, about 2.6% per of all skeletal fractures. The uh, middle third of clavicle is more common, about 8 to 85%. This is a superior view of clavicle, anterior view, and a cross-section view, showing that the middle portion is the narrowest portion of the bone, and it's less coated with soft tissues. Uh, we know that non-displaced fracture, we, the treatment tend to go to non-surgical treatment with a figure of eight bandage or a sling with excellent results and low complication rates. But the majority of clavicle fractures are displaced. This is an anterior posterior uh, x-ray. This is a superior view on a CT scan with reconstruction. On the Proximal fragment, the sternocleidomastoidium, uh, dislocate the, fra the fragment upward and, and posteriorly. In distal fragment, the pectoral is major, deltoid and gravity, dislocate the fragment downward and anteriorly. And other muscles like latissimus and pectoral is major, uh, dislo the, um, dislocate the shoulder medially. So the controversy about this topic is about displaced fractures. Some articles say that uh, has a decreased strength and range of motion, and there is a relationship between shortening and worse functional outcomes. But other articles says that we have a good functional outcome and low complication even when the clavicle is shortened, and some disease like congenital absence of clavicle or surgical removal has little influence on upper limb function. So the objective of our study is to assess the relationship between shortening of, of clavicle after conservative treatment with figure of eight bandage and upper limb function. Our hypothesis is that there is no relationship between shortening and functional impairment. So it, um, we did a cohort study with sequentially recruited patients with mid-shaft clavicle fractures located in the discipline of upper limb surgery of Federal University of Sao Paulo in January 2010 to June 2012. Our inclusion criteria was patients with more than 18 years with acute fracture of middle third of clavicle with no bone contact on anterior posterior and Zanka hydrographic view. Our exclusion criteria was neurovascular injuries, open, fra open fractures, associated fracture in upper limb, like this case with mid-shaft clavicle fractures, acrom acromion fractures, and proximal humeral fractures, bilateral fractures, uh, clavicle fractures with bone contact, fractures with more than 14 days, previous surgery on the affected limb, previous disease in the affected limb that could change outcome, like rheumatoid arthritis or infection. Um, our study was reviewed and approved by National Ethics Committee on Research. All patients receive all the information about our study and agree inside the consent form. So this is a figure of eight bandage that all patients use it for six weeks uh, or until clinical and radiological healing 
the anterior, uh, the anterior view, lateral view, posterior view. On the first evaluation, the length of clavicle was measured on uh, anterior posterior radiograph with patient seated. We measured the distance from the center of sternoclavicular joint, the center from acromclavicular joint, and the shortening was measured between the no fracture side and fracture side. During treatment, all patients were allowed to use the affected limb as tolerated. Uh, there are some articles in literature that say that um, patients prefer to use the sling immobilization, but if we we opti uh, we use the eight mobilization because the patient can use both hands to do all their daily activities. And each patient underwent rehabilitation from the six week onward with exercise to increase range of motion and strengthening. Our main outcomes, the function was measured with disability, arm, shoulder, and hand score, revalidated for Portuguese language, and pain was measured with visual analog scale. The evaluations were made on six week to measure the early outcome, mainly about pain, and after one year to measure the late outcome, mainly about function. So the dash, a uh, little about the DASH questionnaire, it's about with 30 questions self-administrated, with uh, evaluating about symptoms with pain, weakness, stiffness, and numbness, functional status, physical, social, and psychological. Each, que each question is graded from one, the patient has no difficulty to do the task, or five when patient is unable to do the task. So it's a score from zero to 100 with a higher punctuation with poor prognosis. The visual analog scale is a scale from zero to 10 centimeters. With one extremity, we have no pain, and the other extremity, we have pain as bad it could be. So in, during the period of study, we have seven patients, and we excluded 11, because two was open fractures, two with lateral humeral fractures, five fractures with bone contact, two fractures with more than 14 days, and one patient with ipsilateral cuff injury. It has scheduled surgery. So from our 59 patients, the mean age was 34 years, there was a Predominance of male patients, the affected limb was more, com more common on left side. The dominant limb was at on 27 patients. The mean time of fracture was 6.5 days. All patients were followed for at least one year, and we lost follow-up of five patients. The mechanism of injury was predominant predominantly high energy with Majority uh, caused by motorcycle accidents, the occupations was more common, loud demand. The average of shortening was 0 0.92 centimeters. Pain on six week was uh, mute pain with 2.57 and at one year was 0 0.84. The functional outcome at six weeks was a good functional outcome with 28 points and at one year 8.18, an excellent outcome. So we found no correlation between the shortening of limb and dash scar when we set a threshold of two centimeters shortening. That's the, some authors indicate surgery. We not improve the correlation. Uh, one interesting fact is that with patients with greater than two centimeters shortening experience um, less pain than with patients with less than two centimeters shortening, but it's not statistically significant. There was no correlation of dash with mechanism of injury. About occupation, the high demand occupations after one year, patients had um, lower punctuation on dash, but not si statistically significant. We experienced 10 complications. Six were known about non-union. 
we define after nine months of treatment, all our patients had less than one centimeter of shortening. We proposed surgery to them, but they didn't accept it because they said that they had no, no decreasing function. One patient had transient paresthesia around the fracture, and three had aesthetic dissatisfaction. So the discussion is that even today, most of mid-third diaphyseal fractures of clavicle are treated using immob immobilization even when substantially displaced. Uh, the controversy is about non-union that says that shortening greater than 1.5 to 2 centimeters is associated with worse functional outcome. But we have to, have, we have to be careful to um, understand this study because the retrospective study tend to have longer follow-up periods with more complaining patients, so that can be a selection bias. In prospective study, we have some studies that include patients with lateral uh, clavicle, medial clavicle fractures. At our study, uh, at one year, we observed 53 of 54 excellent clinical results assessed by DASH. One patient had a, um, a higher score and was a patient with secondary gain. And we observed that patient with shortening of more than 1.5 centimeters had a good or excellent DASH at one year. Uh, we experienced 16.6 um, failure rate of conservative treatment. Uh, we have to observe that malunion of clavicle fractures, it's not considered a failure, uh, only if it's only considered a failure if it has symptoms associated. The limitations of our study is that there is a small number of patients with shortening greater than two centimeters, about seven patients. Uh, we use a DASH score that's a subjective questionnaire rather than constant score that's objective. Uh, the follow-up time of only one year, it starts because a longer follow-up period might, ex might ex expose deterioration function, especially in patients with high demand occupations. And our hydrograph study, a uh, single anteroposterior hydrograph, to measure classical length may cause some errors due to rotation failure. So the conclusion is that shortening of clavicle that results from conservative treatment with a figure of eight bandage, even when then more than two centimeters, does not affect limb function. We think that um, our study is important because uh, at the end of our clinical practice, all that matters is, is about the patient satisfaction. But as we are orthopedic surgeons, I'm not saying that we have to treat all clavicle fractures with non-operative non treatment. We have to analyze each case. This patient was not one of our study, but we indicated surgery because we thought that this shortening was going to produce um, poor results. So we have to, in our clinical practice, we have to think uh, about operative and non-operative and the risks of each case. Obrigado, thank you. If you want to contact me, this is my email. Feel free to send questions.